All right, so 7.3, we're talking about systems of linear equations. Um, so let me just start with what that looks like. All right, so a system of equations uh, will have, sometimes it'll have a bracket, sometimes not. That just means to consider these two equations at the same time. Um, we're only going to worry about linear equations, meaning if I were to plot these, they make lines. And so I've done that. I've plotted them. Um, and so when we talk about solving a system of linear equations, we're really talking about the point where the two lines intersect. Okay? And so before we start, we'll have, we have a couple of things we need to mention about it. Um, so for a system of equations with one solution, which is what we're discussing, the coordinates of the intersection of the intersection point of the lines is the solution. Um, it will ask you in the homework to verify if a point is a solution. Um, that just means where the two lines intersect. And also, if a point is a solution, then we're going to follow what this second line says, that the solution of a system of equations is the ordered pair that satisfies both equations in the system. So what that means is, if I substitute for this system of equations, since we know our answer is 4 comma negative 1, if we substitute x equals 4, and y equals minus 1 into both equations, we should get true statements. So let's see if we do. All right, so I will first think about the top equation, and then I will do the same thing for the bottom equation. Okay, so this has to hold true for both. So uh, 4 for x minus 1 for y. If this is true, I better get 2 on this side. 4, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 equals 2. So 4 minus 2 does in fact equal 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. So this is a true statement. Okay, we got to get true statements in order for it to work. So let's try this one x was 4 minus 2 times a minus 1, so 4, all right, minus 2 minus 1, minus 2 times minus 1 is a positive 2. 4 plus 2 is, in fact, 6. So we get true statements for both equations, okay? So since both of those equations are true, 2 equals 2, 6 equals 6, then we can confirm that 4 comma minus 1 is a solution to the system. All right. So in order to solve a system of equations, we will discuss three possible ways to do that. Graphing, substitution, and what the book calls addition. Now, I've never heard it called addition. Normally I hear it called elimination, so I will probably refer to it as elimination, but if I think about it, I'll write down addition as well. All right, so first we're gonna talk about graphing. So the way we're gonna solve by graphing is kind of this, what we did here where we're going to graph the two lines. Notice I write carefully graph the two lines. And I'll explain why I say that in a minute. And then the point where they intersect is your solution. Okay. So here's our example. Um, if when you do these, you can get your hands on a grid, that would be a good idea. Um, you don't have to on my math lab. If it says to solve by graphing, it will have a grid uh, for the most part. So when I graph a line, 
when I try to graph the line in this class, um, we have only really talked about using the um, intersects, intercepts. And so uh, we're going to try that. So let me try, I'm going to write down both equations. So I'll worry about the top one, and then I'll worry about the bottom. In fact, I'm going to color coordinate these as well. So the one on the left will be purple, the one on the right will be red. All right, so I would like to use the intercepts. I'm going to try uh, the intercepts. Why? I, the reason I say I'm going to try them is because that will be the easiest points to plot in general. But watch what happens. Uh, let me let me find the x-intercept first. Okay, so for the x-intercept, I am going to let y equal zero solve for x. Now I said you don't have to write this down, but it would be a good idea so that you can kind of get in the habit of doing that. So watch what happens. 4x plus 3 times 0 equals 10. Well, right away, you may have noticed, I'm going to get a fraction. Now that's okay for this example here, because if I get a fraction, it's an exact decimal. Fours cancel, I get 10 fourths, which reduces to 5 halves, which reduces to 2.5. Okay, that's not a hard point to graph on the uh, axis. So I'm going to, I said this would be purple, so I'm going to go plot the point. This would be the point. 2.5 comma 0. So I'm going to go plot that right here. All right, so 2.50, uh, 1, 2, 2.5 is here. Now, on my math lab, if it has you plot something like that, if it's a 0.5, uh, a lot of times it'll have it to where you can do that. Okay, so 2.50. Now I need the y-intercept. The problem here with the y-intercept, uh, I'm just going to show you. In fact, I'm just going to show you why there might be an issue with it for now. Okay, so here is this. So uh, I'm going to try the y-intercept. I'm going to do let x equal 0 solve for y. Okay, that's the rule. So 4 times 0 plus 3y equals 10. 4 times 0 is 0. Watch, I get 3y equals 10. Oh, try not to do this too quickly. 3y equals 10. If I divide both sides by 3, I get a fraction which is fine, but then the decimal is like 3.333 forever. Okay, I can't easily plot that point in this class. Okay, so uh, we can't plot a repeating decimal on my math lab. Okay. So I'm going to choose another point. Okay. If this happens, so if that happens, if that happens with, with an intercept, uh, find another ordered pair. 
One of the examples in the homework that says solve this by graphing has a, a situation like that. So, what I mean by that is, let me look at the example. So, I'm still looking at 4x plus 3y equals 10. Okay, I might have to do a little thinking. If uh, x is equal to 1, that becomes 4. 10 minus 4 is 6, and that cancels out. That divides nicely. So you kind of have to play that game. Uh, find something nice. Okay. So again, if you need to back, that up, back the uh, video up to hear me, I basically said I try some nice easy numbers. 0 would be great. Obviously, it didn't work. If x is equal to 1, I would get 4 here. 10 minus 4 is 6, so I know this will cancel out. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to let x equal 1 and solve for y. Okay? We only do this if my intercepts don't work. 4 times 1 plus 3y equals 10. So uh, 4 plus 3y equals 10. I'm running out of room, so I'm just going to clean this up. Subtract 4 from both sides. And I get 3y equals 6. And then if I solve that, I get y equals 2. Okay. So that would be the point, that's the point, or the ordered pair, 1, 2. So I'm going to plot 1, 2. 1, so we'll go over 1, go up 1, 2. So there are my two points for my purple line. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Okay, so that is the first one. Now, I promise that's the worst one. Okay. All right. Where are we? So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to take this other equation. If possible, I can find the intercepts. Now, it's going to actually work out nice for this one. Okay. So, uh, 2x plus y equals 4. That's the second one. All right, I'm going to find the x-intercept. Again, I say you don't have to do this, but sometimes it helps. Let x equal 0 solve for y. 2 times 0 plus y equals 4. 0 plus y equals 4. y is 4. So that's the point. If x is 0, y is 4. That is the ordered pair 0, 4. So let's go plot 0, 4. All right, so this was 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, now I need to plot. Now I need to plot my y intercept. So let's do that. Y intercept. I'm going to let y equals 0 solve for x. So 2 times x plus 0 equals 4. 2x plus y equals 4. We get 2x equals 4. We're going to divide both sides by 2. We get a nice whole number here. X is equal to 2. Okay. So, if y is equal to 
0, x is equal to 2, that is the point. The x, remember, the x goes first, so 2 comma 0. Okay. All right. So it's going to be really, really, really close to this. Okay, this was 1. Uh, the other one is 2. Right here, this is 2. So I'm going to draw my graph. And I think it's just going to go through uh, this earlier point. Oh, we said we're going to do this in red. So, yeah, it looks like if I had to guess, and I kind of am guessing whenever I use um, graphing, it appears to be going through 1, 2, which was a point I just so happened to choose earlier. So it seems the solution is 1, 2. Okay, and I could double check those. I could plug those into, I could plug the solution into the original to make sure that works. Um, let's see. All right, it works for the bottom one. Um, it works for the top one. I did that in my head. But again, if you can look back at the previous one where we just plugged it in. All right, so the reason I say it appears that that's the solution, the solution is, in fact, this. It is, in fact, 1, 2. We have to be careful with graphing. Okay, I have a grid paper or graph paper in front of me. If you don't have that, then what will happen, I'll show you real quick, is that if you don't have that, then you have like a free-handed graph. Okay, and you can try as good as you can, but if your graph is kind of free-handed, you're kind of guessing where that is. And so the graph paper really helps. On my math lab, it has grid grids for the most part. Um, and so that's how you would do it. But let's check out this warning I have. All right. Unless you have a grid like this uh, and on my math lab, then it may be dangerous to use graphing to solve a system. Because, again, if you look at just a free-handed sketch, in, you know, if you're not careful, then you're not going to really know what that point is. I was able to plot my points exact, so I was able to confirm that they crossed through this point. Okay. Otherwise, you're just kind of guessing. So the better, if we're doing it by hand, the better ways would be substitution and the addition or elimination. Okay. And so the next video, we'll talk about